Hello, I'm Eric Wright, or Mr. Wright, for you ladies out there. I know you're watching. Look, nearly a whole 6% of my viewers are girls. Honestly, I thought it'd be way lower. This nasally Kiwi accent must be doing wonders. But what better time to introduce you to Timbersaw than the week directly after an event where we needed to cut down 20 billion trees. Timbersaw's ultimate makes him stop attacking completely and deals an infinite amount of pure, non-BKB piercing damage. In that one sentence, all of his counters and heroes he counters line up. Timbersaw's tier 1 counters are obviously heroes who stop him using spells or punish him when he does, heroes like Silence, Pugna, and any hero with a silence or who picks up an orchid like Clinks and Storm Spirit. Tier 2 counters are anyone who bursts Timbersaw down, preferably without giving him any reactive armor charges. Reactive armor stacks on hits, so Zeus, Death Prophet, Lena all counter you. In fact, because he doesn't attack himself, two Timbersaws in the same game would counter each other. Tier 3 counters are just heroes who can stop you moving or can keep chase, and a special mention goes out to AA who ruins your prospective health region, and a special fuck off to heroes with segmented stuns like Cold Snap, Enigma's Maleficent, and Witch Dogs' Paralyzing Cask. The only thing worse than having one Timber Chain cancelled is having two cancelled. I mean, obviously. I just sort of trailed off there. If we want to talk about what Timbersaw counters, right up top is duking, just the entire concept of trying to hide in trees because, and this is a very advanced and not well known part of Timbersaw's kit, Timbersaw can destroy trees. I'm working on a Zeus guide at the same time as this, it might even be out now. And the top rung of heroes that counter Zeus can be copy pasted right onto the heroes that Timbersaw himself counters. We can also add all strength heroes in here. Obviously they won't all fit, so let's just compromise and just put the strength hero icon and fill the rest of the space with heroes who depend on illusions, summons, units of any sort, and heroes who attack really fast but don't really do that much damage. Man, we might actually just need to find another triangle to fit everyone. Timbersaw counters a lot of heroes. What are the odds that both no strength heroes get picked and no heroes that attack fast. The only sort of lineup that counters Timbersaw is a lineup of 5 int supports. And when the fuck are you going to see even 3 supports in a pub Dota game? As with every only way to play guide I've done, you can find this one in game as well as on your screen right now. Back in the day, I used to be a big juicy pussy. I used to max reactive armor first and hope that I lived through fights. Now I do the polar opposite, maxing at last and diving head first and dying with style. Yeah, the strat needs work, but at least it looks cool. The actual ability build goes like this. E level 1, max W, Q level 4, max Q, max E, alt whenever possible. Timber chain is your bread and butter and considering we're already using it, we might as well get our money's worth. The same logic leads leads me to maxing Sacred Arrow on Marana. Hey, I'm going to hit every one I throw, why not make it deal an extra 300 damage? It makes sense to me. Whirling Death isn't maxed because one level gives us all we need in its ability to reduce a hero's main attribute by 15%. That doesn't increase with more levels. In fact, nothing increases with more levels other than damage. It's the same cooldown and everything. There's a lot of detail I'm skimming over, so let's just get right in depth and talk about the advanced stuff. Whirling Death has a zero cast point and 300 radius, that's 75 more than Timber Chain's radius, which means an enemy can be hit by Whirling Death first, which is absolutely what you want every fight. This isn't written anywhere, but Timbersaw bends time. Whirling Death deals pure damage if you destroy a tree on the same cast that deals the damage to an enemy, but because it's not quite instant, and because it has a slightly expanding radius during the animation, and because you can be moving with Timber Chain, you can hit someone and then milliseconds later destroy a tree, but if you look at the combat log, they've taken the pure damage before the tree's destroyed. The universe knew you were destined to destroy a tree and even though you hadn't done it yet, it gave you the reward for doing it. Weird stuff, right? Whirling Death stacks additively, and with a 14 second duration on a 6 second cooldown, and with refreshes, octarine cores, and arcane runes, you can potentially get 90% attribute reduction. The odds of that ever happening are so slim they're see-through, but it's it's fun to think about. Timber Chain breaks the tree on arrival. Whirling Death breaks the tree 300 units before that, so with just one tree you can get Whirling Death's boost and Timber Chain's movement. Chakram deals damage on hit and on retraction for 200 mana you can get a fast 360 pure damage nuke. Chakram gives vision. Chakram, when left out, takes 5, 6 and 7 seconds before it costs more than throwing one out, retracting and throwing again. Ag Chakram doesn't stack slows with the original. Before we get into this, understand that if you find another build that doesn't near force you to build stealth shield in every game, then that build is wrong. Start off with the aforementioned shield, pick up some tangos with which you shall destroy many a tree, and pick up a mango and fairy fire. I personally pick up two iron branches now, but if you're a diehard timber saw purist that doesn't want to sully your inventory with tree paraphernalia, then just swap out the iron branches for clarities or something. I'll understand. Our boots of choice are arcanes, especially when we're aiming for bloodstone. Buy a soul ring too for the same reason, and drop arcanes when you use the active on soul 
Soul Ring. If you use spells right away, there's a free 100 mana every cast. When available, start going mad with Infused Raindrops. Spell damage counters Timbersaw and Infused Raindrops counter spell damage, and they give more mana regen, which you might notice is a trend without early core items. I wonder why. Speaking of core items, rush that Bloodstone, getting it hopefully sub 20 minutes, then build Arcane Boots again to break into Etherlands, and then again again to break down into Octarine Core. God, our efficiency levels are off the charts. We must be like 9k when it comes to making the most out of our item slots. I personally don't go eggs every game, but you totally could. It gives health, mana, and more damage than you can shake a tree branch at. The tree branch obviously coming from a freshly felled tree because of said chakram. Other situational items include blade mail, BKB, pipe, shivers, scythe, blink, four stuff. It's all case by case. Four stuff, so Ricky counter. Shivers is a physical burst counter. Refresher is a timber chain fuck up counter. Unless you're really bad. I truly don't know why Timbersaw is considered an offlaner. What sort of offlaner is completely irrelevant until he farms up a 4,875 gold item in Bloodstone, and yet that's where we're told to go. I prefer taking a carry such as Timbersaw's safe lane, potentially solo safe lane, or mid. Wear a carry, we need levels and items. If you do have to go offlane like you will do in 90% of your games, pray to any god that you can that it's not a tri lane. You can win a 1v1, you can break even on a 1v2, you can abandon and try your luck again in another game if you get a 1v3. Before that though, Timbersaw's an interesting guy to contest the level 1 rune with. If you really wanted to, you could do the pseudo phoenix strat and position yourself snugly in some trees on the enemy side of the river, have the rune spawn and Tarzan your way from tree to tree, picking up the rune on the way. And of course, no sane man would suggest this because where it excels in style points, it loses out in practicality and safety and intelligence. After we give the rune to the enemy because we failed our drive-by rune snipe, we go to our lane and farm like madmen. With your abysmal base damage and low mana cost spells, I'd be totally fine with you securing last hits with Timber Chain and Whirling Death. But at least, you know, try to hit the enemy with every cast, walk behind them maybe, and cast Timber Chain towards your tower. If you get low, aggro the creeps, take 5 hits and back off. You can aggro creeps by clicking on any enemy hero on the game. You can you could be bot lane, click the Luna on top lane and the creeps will, I guess, just go out of their way to save her honor or something. Because we've got our shield, the creeps pretty much do no damage and activate our free helm of iron will. Level 1 reactive armor at 5 stacks is the exact same stats as helm, 5 armor, 5 regen. With that, it's pretty hard to imagine a way in which we lose our lane. Our sustain is brutal and whenever we're feeling confident we can just run the enemy down with our exorbitant amount of damage, it's almost not even fun. Almost. So let's just assume you win your lane, now it's time to, oh, you've just been counted. Timbersaw's biggest counter, pushing. The concept of a tower. Timbersaw is like Amber Spirit turned up to 11. You can be the only survivor of a 5 on 5 team fight, come out on full health and full mana, have 2 minutes of free reign on taking ranks and still not get them. So let's go dull the pain by cutting down some more trees. Farm for that bloodstone and after you pick it up, let's go fight. Some cool things to keep in mind are that there are thousands of trees on the map and some are blocking the ones that you want to get to. Chuck a chakram out short range just to clear the trees that you don't want to hit and then timber chain to the tree over the cliff or on the other side of the lane. Same thing with Whirling Death. You're an amazing brute juker in that instead of running around paths and trees, you can just will your own juke spots into existence. Whirling Death and key spots and you've just unlocked a secret passageway. That's assuming we're ahead though. Timbersaw is played very differently depending on the position he is in the game. If you're among the most farmed, go crazy aggressive. If you're behind, stick on the outskirts of fights, occasionally jumping through the fight with a timber chain and Whirling Death to arrive on the other side of the outskirts. Late game fights on side lanes and in the jungle are where you shine. As soon as the enemy decide that they want to clash in the river and base, Timbersaw pulls up a bench and has to sit on the sidelines, but Timbersaw's also the pace setter, so start fights where you want fights, and if there aren't any trees anywhere near, well, here's something that no one's ever done but is super cool in theory. Plant trees knowing that you'll need them to escape. If you've got spare iron branches for some reason and all the other trees are toppled for some other reason, plant your happy little trees knowing that in less than 20 seconds it's going to die. I mean, it's not efficient at all, per se, but we're Timbersaw. It's a good game when trees be falling, win or lose. This guide was brought to you by my pledges. You ready? <gasps> Christian Rudder, Free Kill, Brandon Coom, Matt Masters, Crit Satsu, Pudimon, Apfos, Wooshbar, Spartan Wolf, Pearson, Newborn, Michael Robb, Chet Kanan, Simon, Shadow Sweetheart, Evil Motherfucking Jellyfish, Aaron Tang, Jacob Miller, Mobius, Lasse Kvitstad, yeah, I bet you thought I'd pronounce that one wrong, didn't you? HX Light, Leon Stinks, Snuggly Wuggums, Grumpy Bear, Lord Herbert, Ninny Bottoms, Chestnut, Yabus McGee, Outer Center, Adam Sienna, Tsunami Shadow, Gregulus Green Leaf Shank, Joy Deludin's Wing, Martin Thoreau, Maximus 2D, Shoop John Boone, Milo Code, and Radical Mitchell.